Hi, my name is John Cho Polizzi. I'm a translator of contemporary German language literature, and today I'm going to be reading from Lynn Hills's Das Verschwinden der Welt, The Disappearing World. Where would you go if you weren't here? What kind of questions were these? Yi did not have an answer. It bothered him because he had to ask himself whether he really wanted to be here at all. Here in this somewhat shabby apartment, here in this house, here on this dirty river, here with his darling, demanding son and his tired, crotchety wife, who hadn't called him flour in far too long. In that moment, two pieces of white bread sprung from the toaster, and Yi was reminded of the promise he'd made to himself at his son's birth. He'd wanted to be a good father, one who only struck his child on the rarest of occasions and took even his most ridiculous questions seriously. He blinked, examining son for a while. Lisbon, Yi decided. Perhaps I would like to be in Lisbon. Why? They say the sea there is still blue. I like mild winters and there's good fish. I saw it on TV, you know, I can't live without fish. Good, son replied, finally cramming a slice of peach into his mouth. It always made ye happy when son ate fruit. Have some more pineapple, it's particularly good right now. I got the very last one, he said, and son obliged. It also made ye happy when his son followed his advice. At dinner, they all sat around the table together, and everything was as it had been before. No questions about somewhere else, only observations about the here and now. The soup wasn't too salty, the clock in the kitchen was two minutes slow. He needed a new sweater because his old one was already coming apart at the seams. Son could study macroeconomics. It would be good for him to study for a few semesters and then see how he felt. Art of any sort was something better suited for a hobby. Chewing mouths, rattling plates. Son cleared the table and went off to fetch the chessboard from the hall. Yi's wife was doing dishes. Three satisfied automatons. At some point, Sun moved a chess piece and said goodnight, and disappeared into his bedroom. He knew his son would still be reading a novel for hours, and eventually he advanced his knight on the board, F3, just like he always did. Night fell, and morning came, but by morning, Sun had vanished, taking all familiar routine with him. The world had become strangely foreign, Yi's wife, Yi's own body. They had become orphaned parents, their kitchen table, a place for only two. And although it had already been this way before, many years ago, their two-ness no longer provides the same feeling of completion. At one time, they had been whole as two. Now there's something missing, and he has dedicated his final strengths to making sure this absence does not become inadequacy. If they had never had a child, would their two-ness still suffice? Perhaps not. Ye had observed similar things transpire with couples who never lost a child. Observed the way closeness transforms into a sort of narrowness. Nests transform into a cage. He's heard verbal reflexes that had once been expressions of love. Son's chair now occupies the hallway closer to the door. It's waiting there, as if to call their child home. But it's there too, so they're not forced to see its emptiness at every meal. She calls him flower again after so many years and cries only a little in doing so. Yi wanders his own thoughts and the memories of his child are like a garden. At first he ventures only cautiously along the little paths between the beds. At some point he encounters the anger, then the desperation. Yi waltzes through the gardens of his memories like a bulldozer trampling everything flat until the soles of his shoes push deep into the soil. Of course they had tried to find him. Of course, they had done everything. This just happens sometimes, unfortunately, the police officer had said without meeting their eyes. He'd stared only at his screen, chewing on a bit of dried beef like a dog. Unfortunately, sometimes people's lives just shatter and cannot be put back together. Everything is broken and you just have to go on. In English, his son's name means sun. But sun was always more like the moon a cold heavenly body, a bit of the essence is lost with each translation.